Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome to Labor Day. Boy, I tell you, I guess just everybody's outside barbecuing and just kind of getting ready, getting the kids ready for school and and on and on and on and on. But folks, guess what? We've got a big thing coming up now. As you know, we've got a we're getting right into the campaign. I mean, everybody's saying now we're going to really, really get in the campaign. And I just want to warn you right up front. Don't overstress yourself. Just take it easy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right? You're going to be bombarded with all kinds of stuff, especially the mailing. If you if you can't afford Comcast, naturally, they're going to they've, they've compensated for that, too. You're going to be getting mailers and your mailers and whatever. You're going to be see, people, people be sitting up there knocking on your door, depending upon where you live. They're going to be at churches. I mean, even the ministers are going to be talking about this stuff, even though they're nonprofit. They're being asked to get get involved in the campaign. So every, we want to all be involved, which is very important, too. But understand, look, don't stress out on this piece. It's very, very important. So I just want to sh- start it off with 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 this, with the show, because that's kind of like where we are. And our, and our position is to try, try to educate you and inform you. And so on any guests that we have on from this point on, it's trying to lay the land out for you to give you a better feel of how to handle it. But remember this. If you want to get involved in this deal, you got to register to vote. If you haven't registered to vote, get out and vote because come October, you can between, between now and October, you can decide which parties you want to go into. But even though you get into another party, you can still vote to whoever you want. And that's just bottom line. That's that's what it's all about. So with that, I'm just going to go on. We're going to open up the show. We're going to open up with a show because I think it's very, very important. As you know, we've got uh, two, the two major parties, the Republican Party and Democratic Party, are basically like leading the whole deal, you know, for president, so to speak. But they're not talking about the issues. They're barely hitting the issues. And so the media has to be forced, if you will, to talk to the issues. And uh, like anything else, they're selling advertisements and all this, this, that, and the other. So the plan now is that there are two parties out there. They're very legitimate parties. Uh, they're uh, I'm talking about the Libertarian Party and the Green Party. They're both. Um, actually, one of them, the Libertarian Party, has two seasoned governors, one of which happens to be uh, actually one who's running for, for, uh, for president. Uh, New Mexico is governor from New Mexico. And the state right next to it is, guess what, Mexico. And, you know, we've been talking about this whole issue about Latinos, and whether you use the word Latinos, Hispanic, or Mexicans, or whatever, but the fact of the matter is it is an issue, okay? But but the, you've got two seasoned people who are running, and I think that's a very important piece. And uh, they've got issues. They've been there before. They've been there before. If anybody could talk about the whole issue of undocumented, there, done that. Un- undocumented workers and whatever, they had to have been able to deal with it. You know, You don't hear about it, but guess what? You can. And so I think that if we can get those... You get those folks in the debate aspect of it. Uh, come 26, that's when it's going to all start. It's going to all start nationally across the board. That's going to be three or four of them, I guess. They've already picked out the uh, the, the, uh, the administrators or the whatever. Moderators. The moderators and this, that, and the other. And uh, so I think it's going to be very interesting. So I, so I think it's a good deal. So that's what we're doing here right now. I uh, just happen to have one of the um, one of the entities, and I'm talking about the Libertarian Party. You've seen Scott here before. Uh, Scott's. Well, that's interesting. Scrimshaw. It, it's almost like my last name, Broussard. You know, that's why I use Bruce all the time. <laughs> yeah, Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw. Is, it's artwork done on ivory, going back to the Inuit Indians, the um, also the European whalers. Hey, so Scrimshaw, really? very unique name. Whalers. You were a whaler at one point in time. Back, yeah, back in the day, my ancestors. Boy, you look like one of those whalers. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, but you know, this is this is community television, folks. We can we can be a little bit like we're not we don't have any ads here. We're this is real world stuff. But anyway, we got Scott here. He's been here before. But what we're gonna do? We got an hour. The first half of the hour, we're going to spend some time educating you about what is the rationale and what was my rationale in making sure that I'm supporting this idea of the Libertarian Party being a part of the debate, which will be best for us. We need to know these. We need to know about the issues. We got some major issues. You brought something up, Bruce. You brought something up in his initial uh, in your initial um, discussion. You said even ministers are going to be talking about this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and that immediately people think about. Oftentimes we think that you know church and politics. You're not ministers are not supposed to be speaking about politics. Oh yeah, none problem. The idea of partisan. In other words, the partisanship. We are allowed to ministers are allowed to discuss issues, but the idea is to not represent a particular at the expense of all others to exclude the others. And 
that brings up the whole idea of partisanship. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, the, what we are dealing with is the Commission on Presidential Debates, mm -hmm. and they are bipartisan. Uh, what is it? Commission on <coughs> Presidential pres Debates. Debate. Now, what is, is that? Is that a corporation? Is that a nonprofit? Is that a private entity? It is a corporation that is governed by representatives of the Democratic Party and representatives of the Republican Party. And the significance of this is it nonprofit? Or profit? It's it. I, it's um, I believe I it's, it's a, a nonprofit. No, it's nonprofit. It's, it's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. Tax exempt has a tax exempt status and this is why this is why I was bringing up the idea of partisanship it's one thing to be bipartisan but bipartisan is not the same thing as being nonpartisan mm -hmm. and so if you're going to be nonpartisan these debates you should have a Gary Johnson libertarian party on that platform you should have a Republican um, on that platform you should have a Democrat on that platform that's nonpartisan if you're only allowing a Republican or a Democratic person to be on that debate stage that's partisanship okay. so we often in our language and in our daily experience equate bipartisanship to be the same as nonpartisanship and actually Governor Weld who is the vice presidential candidate on our libertarian ticket right. you know bear in mind this is a man who is the former uh, part of the the Reagan Justice Department so he's a very smart cookie he's prosecuted criminal activities he's prosecuted at federal courts and he recognizes that right now the Commission on presidential debates is jeopardizing its tax exempt status mm, I imagine yeah. by being being yeah. bipartisan yeah. they're not yeah. being nonpartisan and so we're getting back to this idea of churches oh. churches can speak bring up ideas but you want to represent all the different points of view mm -hmm. otherwise you're practicing what's called mm -hmm. partisan mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. and that is not allowed by the IRX IRS based on the Johnson Act of the 1950s which changed the way that churches can politic mm -hmm. and so this is the same thing tax exempt status is being granted to the um, Commission on presidential debates they are not by part, they are not nonpartisan. They have a vested interest oh, in so. keeping out these other organizations. But, but look, but we do know that they traditionally they do represent issues. You know, once the thing is all over with, they represent have to deal issues. With issues. But the bottom line is that we, the American people, need to know for fact what is the definition. Their well, the big thing definition. is not everybody represents issues. It's whether or not you're representing the different voices that represent the American people. Yeah. And right now, you have a voice in Governor Johnson who's representing a wide swath. Millions of people are represented by this by Governor. Johnson and Governor Weld, but because of the partisan exclusionary nature of the Commission on Presidential Debates, that voice is not being represented before you, the American people. But you people. do agree that, in all due respect, both the uh both, both uh, Hillary and, and Donald Trump are not dealing with the issues. It's a personal They are comedy. not dealing with the issues. And that's, that's the, that's the, the only party right about. now is, is as you, I would encourage each one of your viewers, each one of the people participating in this, mm -hmm. really start looking at what's being spoken about. Governor Johnson, Governor Weld are truly speaking to issues. Go, um, when you talk about a Donald Trump or you talk about a Hillary Clinton, right. they are not speaking to issues. They're speaking at each other. Gary Johnson is talking about immigration issues. Gary Johnson is talking about economic issues. Gary Johnson is talking about decriminalization issues. Gary Johnson is talking about free trade. This is the first time in American history since World War II that we do not have a free trade candidate competing in the major two parties. That's unprecedented. We've but, never. But they're not being given their time to be heard. And normally you tend to identify that with the the, ma the mass media. The mass media. They're, they're not well, that mass media is driven is ratings driven. So that's a catch twenty two, because they want to have the you know the, they want to have the big names and it's a perpetual it, it perpetuates itself. So they only represent two voices. So people only watch two voices. Right. So it, that, they demand more two voices. So how do we get them in there? Well, how do we get them in there? You get look for the example. Table. You give you give these people a fair hearing, and more importantly, you start looking at what's happening in the larger spectrum of media. Yeah. We just recently had the Richmond Times Dispatch, which is a very, it's a daily paper. It's not as large as... You're talking about Gary now. Gary Johnson. Gary, okay, the Richmond the, 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 Times Dispatch, a very distinguished daily newspaper, came out and endorsed Governor Johnson for president. Richmond Times, where is that? Where is That's it? out of Richmond, Virginia, Richmond, the Virginia, capital okay. of Virginia. All right. So now when people, when we're talking about these polls, yeah. and the polling agencies calling and saying, do you want to have you know, Donald Trump? Do you want to have Hillary Clinton? Right. Do you want to have Governor Johnson? as president or on the debate stage, et cetera, now suddenly people in Virginia know who Gary Johnson is because this Richmond Times-Dispatch came out with a, a, a really 
a very um, solid endorsement of Gary Johnson. So it, it creates the dialogue and the discussion in Virginia. The same thing here as if the Oregonian were to, you know, Doug Perry has written some, actually he's written three very good pieces on Governor Johnson in the last, um, probably the last couple months, recently in the last four weeks. So if the Oregonian were to start writing pay, uh, um, articles that really informed us about the, the resumes of these two governors, now we're being given information that informs us. So when a pollster calls us, we can say, yes, I want Gary Johnson on that debate stage because we know who Gary Johnson is. Mm -hmm. um, up, and that's the battle that we're facing. It really gets down to why is it this 15 percent? Why are we even talking about polls? We're talking about polls because initially back in the 80s, the League of Women Voters, the League of Women Voters handled the presidential debates. And this was a nonpartisan group. That yeah, they are. these the, the League of Women Voters, yeah, they, they were um, actually they were basically doing the, the debates. While they were doing the debates, they started to see the encroachment of the Democratic Party and the encroachment of the of the Republican Party in silencing other voices. And in 19, I believe it was 1988, could have been as late as 1992, but I believe it was 1988, the League of Women Voters came out and said that they can no longer participate in the deception that is taking place in front of, to the American people, that the that we are being denied accurate representation of other voices. Mm -hmm. And because of the partisan nature of the Democratic and Republican debates, they no longer would handle it. And that's when this private corporation was created that took former heads of the Democratic Party, former heads of the Republican yeah. Party, and now you've got two entrenched parties controlling who is on this debate oh, stage. Okay, okay. That, is the, that is the history. If you want more history about it, there's something called Our America okay, Initiative. So, so I, okay, I get that, but now how do you guys get in it? How do we get into yeah. this debate? I mean, no, how do you get into the principles? You know, you said that it was, the, it was as a result of the Republican Party and Democrat, getting together and said, okay, fine, we're going to go on to our debates. So we need to get to that debate stage. The commission I think on about Ross Perot, I think, from a, I think right. about the George Wallace. So the, 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 what, these different people were able to get to the debate stage, but they weren't, um, we are, it, after the Ross Perot um, presidential election. They had that organization then? Yeah, uh, yes, but they didn't have the 15% threshold. Oh, they didn't have 15%. Ross Perot did better than they wanted him to do, and so they set this threshold of 15%, which is almost an impossible threshold to meet. Um, yeah, it, to keep it, you it, out. To keep yeah. you out, and it attests <laughs> to the absolute, dis it, this attests to the disgruntled nature of the American electorate that these minor parties now are scoring so high across the nation, that when you're talking about Gary Johnson is at a solid 12%, and this, right now we're getting into the sweeps where we're, you're going to see commercials, you're going to hear air, radio airtime, um, ads on radio, television, you're seeing it through news media, through um, social media, you're seeing it as you drive down I-5 I right when, now. When are we going to know that they, they will either be allowed to... The, to the first debate. presidential debate takes place on the 26th right. of September, so right. we will know before that. Um, I may be like off... Like about when? Um, I'm, my guess is that, the, but, as I understand it, so the polling sweeps will take place... Uh, the, starting the 15th, somewhere around the 15th. The 15th okay. So they will make phone calls to people. People will be asked a series of questions. Now, how we frame that question... Mm -hmm. Now, who's doing that? Gains or who's doing I'll that? I'll explain that in a moment. So, how <laughs> the question is asked affects the response given. Sure. So, the Commission on Presidential Debate debates works in tandem with ABC News, Washington Post, uh, yeah, New well, York well, Times, yeah. Quinnipiac polls. Yeah. So these are the polling these are the polling companies right. that are going to be asking the questions. Now if if I call you up and I say, Mr. Broussard, would you like to see Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, or Gary Johnson as your president? Yeah. It, as soon as you hear that that other name other than Trump or Clinton, people instantly key into that, and they have a like a higher likelihood of saying Gary Johnson yeah, than they, they do. Because there's a lot of folks out there that, that won't vote for either one of them. They won't vote for either one. So if we put they're, Gary they're Johnson in the first tier yeah. of that question, okay. we get a, a much higher response rate okay. of wanting Gary Johnson as president. And then you got the Green Party too. I think they're, they're the Green being, Party they're being as considered well. Considered too. They're being considered, and and um, but the point, the focal point being is if we are not put on a first tier status on that question, mm -hmm. if they call up and they say, Mr. Broussard, would you like to see Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, or other, 
on that um, on your president as your presidential option. Mm -hmm. um, most people, because they don't know who other is, they have a tendency to force it, to respond to, to another name. To they no, they have a tendency to respond to a Trump or a Clinton because other is unknown and people are hesitant to embrace something that they don't know. Okay. But, but the other so you're two gaining names, the question. Okay, but, but you got the other two names, you know. But, but they're not being given first tier and status. And they're not being as familiar. But but in some circles, they've identified the the uh, Libertarian Party. As taking votes from Trump, actually, we're then, taking votes e pulling then, equally from then, both and Clinton the Green and Trump. Party. The Green Party would be taking votes from the. The Democrats. Green Party is a little bit of a different situation because, um, the, for example, the Libertarian Party will be on the ballot of all 50 states. The Green Party won't be. I think they're going to be on 35 states. Oh, really? have, the Green Party does have. There's a mathematical possibility of winning it, but they're not on all 50 states. The Liber Gary Johnson is on the ballot of all 50 states. So, I mean, they went through a process to get. Yes, there. and that's and that process is itself is an illustration of the de of the two dominant parties, mm -hmm. Republican mm -hmm. Democrats, mm -hmm. making it very difficult mm -hmm. for a third party candidate. Mm -hmm. To even be on the ballot, Ohio. How long, how long has the Libertarian Party been in existence? Um, since 1971. 71. I'm um, 71. So okay. that's a long period of time, and it really came out of the disgruntled, you know, basically looking at where we were moving as mm -hmm. a nation politically, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. had the foresight. It's very interesting. The Libertarian Party. Its building block is the individual. It all rests on the rights of the individual. Because if you don't have a right as an individual, you really don't have a right as a mm -hmm. as a family, as a as a community, as an institution. Mm -hmm. as, if you can attack or undermine the standing of the individual, you can undermine and attack the in, the institutions that the individual make up. Mm -hmm. Be it the family, be it your political mm -hmm. party, be it your local <laughs> club. Mm -hmm. it, it, you have to have the defense of the individual. Mm -hmm. And part of why people are concerned about what's happening in our nation with the Donald Trump, Donald Trump is very authoritarian driven. Donald Trump is very party oriented, not the individual. But it's their candidate. It's the collective. Is it, but it's their candidate. Yes, but it's a transition from the American mindset has always been the, the rugged individual, the, the, um, the, the self-reliance, or we as individuals taking care of the needs of others in our community. Mm -hmm. So it's not the government's job to feed people. It's my job to have a relationship but, with my but, neighbor. But, but you would say as part of the process, they were selected by their respective parties. They were selected by the their... Republican Party selected Trump. Right. Which is elective driven. Party selected Hillary Clinton. Which, con in contrast to the Libertarian Party, it's really a, co it's a collective mindset. It's the party mindset. The building block of the, of the Libertarian Party is the individual. So that means you and I and our churches, you and I, our families, if I defend the individual, I defend each and every single one of the institutions that the individual makes up, hmm. which is very different than the collectivism that you see perhaps in the Green Party or you're seeing really in the Trump authoritarian, authoritarian why driven... You, why, I tell you what, why don't you break that down a little bit more by basically including yourself. How did you get involved in this? How did I get involved? And what was your this? rationale for joining and why are you here? With you know, me? about um, probably about nine months ago, I created a Facebook page, mm -hmm. and my goal was to look at every single candidate that was out there, whether it was John Kasich, whether it was um, Cruz, whether or not it was O'Malley, Martin O'Malley on the Democratic Party. My goal was to try to find something positive and favorable ah. about each one, because it was so easy to throw dirt. It was so easy to, yeah, well, to, yeah. to undermine this or that. You couldn't, you couldn't do anything And else. as I did that, <laughs> I just got, it became more and more wearying that to exhausting. my soul. Exhausting. More, because I, the, the, it was so negative. And also, the more I saw what a Donald Trump stood for, or even what a Ted Cruz stood for, or what a John Kasich stood for, or what a Martin O'Malley stood for, none of it lined up with what I understood my experience of America. And you're talking to someone, I started out, I, I lived in Canada as a child. I lived in Arizona as a young boy. I lived in Virginia as a um, junior high school oh, student. Know, and I lived in South Carolina as a high school student. So I have, and then I moved on my own when I graduated from high school, I moved to California on my own. Okay. So I have lived in a cross section of the United States. I've lived in the South. I've, I've seen race relations in the South. I have lived in California. I've seen race relationships between the Hispanic communities. Um, one of my experiences I'd love to bring up here on the show um, in California dealing with a young boy who worked, for, I was working for a veterinarian and that young man, um, he was of Hispanic ancestry, and the ICE, the, the immigration, ICE, yeah. ICE, the ICE was doing a sweep, rounding up immigrants, rounding up um, illegals, and I, I don't know how to describe to you to see a young man, 17, 18 years old, locking himself in a kennel cage, in, a, in an animal's cage 
hoping he won't be discovered by ICE mm. to be kicked out of the country, away from his family. Mm. His, his sister was a naturalized citizen. He himself was not. Now, I was not aware. I was too young at the time. I didn't understand you it. Know what was I didn't on. understand. But in retrospect, I think about it. What draws me to the Libertarian Party? Right now, they're the only party that's talking about a sane response to our immigration needs. Um, I was on the KYKN um, tel radio show the other day out of Salem, and somebody was talking about sealing up our borders like um, a Tupperware container. Well, you seal up a Tupperware con <laughs> container, what do you do? You suffocate. The point is, it's not so much about whether or not we have a fluid border. The question is, do we have access to our country where we know that people of good intent, with a working, with a background check, with a work, with a, um, a valid um, social security card to, to pay taxes. So we know people of good intent are coming through our borders at the proper checkpoints, at the proper gateway, the proper venue. So so anybody else that's coming at night, anybody else that's not coming through the proper pathway, we know instantly that those people are coming over with bad intent. Maybe they're drug smugglers, maybe they're human traffickers. So if you have an access point of fluidity across our border through the right gate, there is no concern that I don't have a concern because anybody that's not coming separates the, the, the wolves from the sheep or the sheep from the wolves. Because what ends up happening, persons coming across the border um, illegally not with the vetted background check, not with the um, social security card. I know they have criminal intent, so I can pick them up. I can identify that issue. People of good intent, hardworking people wanting to work at the jobs that are available. Um, they are wanting to come into our country, and I think Johnson hits it right on the head. Do a background check, get them a work visa. So you got involved. Oh, I definitely got involved. What about involved. Bernie Sanders? Did you, did you put him you in know, that Bernie mix? Sa yeah, when I first, and Bernie Sanders, I understand, I, I saw his authenticity. I saw, in my appeal, you know, I wrote a very impassioned letter to the Oregonian to um, the, the Bernie Sanders uh, folks mm -hmm. because when I saw what happened to Bernie Sanders with the, um, the DNC with Deborah Wasserman, you know, Bernie Sanders should have been treated impartially. He should not have been treated prejudicially. And Bernie Sanders was treated prejudicially by his own party, by the Democratic National Committee, by the Democratic Party. They made sure that he was not treated fairly and it changed the outcome. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders, when you think about it, you think about what happened in, in Arizona precincts with voting, people casting their primary votes. You think about what happened in New York City with um, precinct voting for primaries. People's votes were discounted. People's votes were not counted. People who shouldn't have been voting were voting. And so there's a lot of um, chaos, a lot of, um, again, I don't feel that it has become so corrupt that I will say it's rigged. I will say there is bias. Mm. I will say that there is prejudice against. And, this, and Bernie Sanders should have been treated um, impartially and he was not. And that's part of why what I say with um, Gary Johnson. He should, because he represents a large swath of the American public, he should be treated impartially, not by partisan politics. He should be allowed a place on that platform to debate on stage. Mm -hmm. But of course, the two, ex the two ex existing dominant parties, they know if Gary Johnson gets on that stage, all bets are off. And it is my personal belief that if Governor Johnson and Governor Weld make it to the presidential debates, we will win this election. Mm -hmm. America will suddenly realize how they're being cheated of two very distinguished gentlemen. You look at their resumes. Um, we talk about, okay, bring it here to Oregon. We're talking about um, the marijuana industry. We're talking about the microbrewery industry. Think about the economics of all this. Okay, um, why do we have a microbrewery industry in Oregon? Is because back in the late 70s, early 80s, deregulation took place that allowed these microbreweries to be created. All the microbreweries, the beers, the money, the good times that are being generated mm -hmm. from it would never have existed without the deregulation that mm -hmm. took place. And deregulation is a very important tenant of the Libertarian Party. Now, what is deregulated to what extent it's being deregulated? That's a debate in-house. You know, some people like Gary Johnson does not want to do away with the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. That's a regulatory body that he believes is very significant and very important. But what about, in all due respect, you, we're in Oregon here, but we still have the, the, the two major issues right now that are being discussed right now. is the whole issue of undocumented workers mm -hmm. uh, in that particular aspect of it. And uh, in all due respect, the African American community. I mean, you see, they're, they're all over the place today, right now. Uh, I mean, uh, wow, Donald Trump is trying so hard to court the the black vote, yeah. and it's just that he's right. pandering. It's pandering. But he is outreaching. 
He's making the outreach. No one I think else is. No, actually, that's not true. The um, Johnson campaign is oh, very much. A, we have what's called. The, okay, now the Johnson oh. campaign is broken up into the national campaign. Okay. Um, let's call it national headquarters. Okay. Okay? okay. But you also have part of the national campaign is this mm. this group called coalitions. It's just as equal. It's just as a valid part of the campaign. And the coalitions we have the Johnson Weld Faith Coalition. Mm. We have the we have Latinos for Gary Johnson. Mm -hmm. You have the Women Coalition. So these are different coalitions that are reaching specific. Civic demographics. We, a black we have a black coalition. Okay. So part of um, part of what this is all about is reaching people where we live. Mm. Okay, so uh, maybe you're you know you're a black American and you like Gary Johnson, so you can speak to your community perhaps better than I can as a white American. It doesn't mean that I can't mm. speak. Certainly, so I mean many black people embrace me. I, I may be white, but that doesn't matter because I'm embraced the same way as we may have a different background. But you and I embrace you. You embrace me. But we're we're still struggling for assimilation. We're struggling. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Once and, but, we get there, it won't and be. And where does that assimilation American, come from? Right? That assimilation comes from all of us as in individuals, yeah, the building yeah, block of the Libertarian yeah, yeah. Party, if you as a black American have the same individual rights as I have, and I'm not saying not simply on paper, but in terms of application, in terms of experience, when you and I have the same experience, when our, when that it's, when we have the defense of the individual in terms of the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, mm -hmm. now we're on an equal footing. That's a good point. Because then, when you say Oregon, you know, of late we've been having some, some pretty heavy press in this area, i.e., the, the whitest state in the union. It is the I whitest think. state, but it's and not. You know Actually, saying? there's a whole shadow economy yeah, that takes it, place yeah. here. You have the, this is a very large immigration, large, um, when you look at the um, the apple, look at the orchards, look at, I just read an article this morning, North Carolina is having a dearth right now of people who, seasonal migrant workers who are harvesting the apples, the, the pears, the peaches, the cherries, um, because we have created such a fear, right, either because of the fear of um, being, of, of immigration sweeps because of the fear of a Donald Trump or because of an improper understanding of a border. A border. <laughs> Hillary Clinton doesn't understand what it means to be a governor of a state that borders another nation. Mm -hmm. Gary Johnson does. Mm -hmm. And so think of the impact here in, in, in Oregon if you lose that migrant worker population. If um, Partly because of what's happening here um, nationally in terms of the economic strength of the United States is not as great as it used to be. So people are not coming. Well, actually what's happening, people are not coming from Mexico as much to the United States for work opportunities because of the weakened American economy. Almost a million people a year right now are migrant workers or immigrants or undocumented um, personnel. We don't whatever category they fall into. Mm -hmm. They're no longer coming to the United States. They're leaving the United States to go back to Mexico because the work and economic opportunities are not as great in the U.S. as mm -hmm. they were even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So in, on Oregon, so now in, in Oregon, Oregon, the same thing. But, Why but, do I want to come to Oregon to work in the fields or to, to yeah. own a restaurant? In fact, you, you, you may not have knowledge of this, but just of late, for that matter, there's been quite a bit of a uh, uh, whole issue of, uh, here within, within the Portland community. Uh, i.e. the migration mm -hmm. and the uh, the whole issue of uh, housing and things of that nature absolutely in the in the, in the black community and stuff like that we're getting that. into gentrification now we're getting into right um, but my regulation. point is that the big push has been going to the Gresham area so to speak but just recently and it's just it's just happened in the news by the way that uh, it just so happened a, a, a white american mm -hmm. ran over a african american mm -hmm. Actually, they're, they're yes. Racist, you saw that. Murdered. Yeah, murdered, murdered. Black this. American. It was husband and wife, right? That's or right. boyfriend, girlfriend. That's right. I mean, just, just despicable. Uh, Not I mean, even despicable. Here it's in tragic. Oregon. In Oregon. In Portland. Okay. Oh, and what you know what it's doing? It's highlighting. We have a lot of work to do, right? We have a tremendous amount of work to do, and that gets back to these different coalitions. Coalitions can do things that not, that maybe someone in a larger party or a larger um, yeah, yeah. dialogue can't do. But we um, need to talk about it. I mean, we need to put it on the table, right? Oh, we need to call it out. It's, it's right, not just man. talk about it. We need to call it out. Call and it out. Gary Johnson is doing it. Gary yes. Johnson was the yes. first presidential yes. candidate to say death by cop. Right. Death by cop. Mm. When he saw, I, I, forgive me, I don't remember the gentleman's name. He got shot in his car with his wife, mm -hmm. and it was filmed on Facebook. Yep, I told okay, that. death by cop. He made that statement. He made that statement. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't say it to the disparagement or to attack mm -hmm. the police because there are mm -hmm. many, most police officers, just like most black people, most Hispanic people, are good, hardworking, upright people. Mm -hmm. So it's not to lump everybody into one category. Tell me something. I mean, we, we're going to he, he defends yeah, what, police what about, officers. What about, for instance, like, what about outreaching, this, outreaching for instance, like the NAACP? Uh, we he, have, uh, here, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, back in... Um, 
six weeks ago, six, seven weeks ago. No, it's got to be six weeks ago now. The NAACP had invited Donald Trump, Donald Trump, sorry, had invited Donald Trump to speak at the National Convention mm -hmm. in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump declined that invitation. Okay. So it's interesting to me, he has, a issue, he has problems with black America. He's declined some of the most prestigious invitations he could have. Okay. And he has but he's doing it now. He's doing it now because he's okay. pandering. So he's how, realizing. So, Gary, so, Gary, so he Gary, was invited. So um, Trump was invited to the NAACP conference. Um, he declined that invitation. So Gary Johnson, the that, so the Gary Johnson campaign, contacted the NAACP and and made overture saying we would like to to be to take that spot and to speak oh, really? to use that time to introduce the NAACP its members its audiences what happened okay well because we're so trapped into this box this republican democratic mm -hmm. narrative mm -hmm. they they are asking for um threshold numbers or criteria which are really numbers. apples and oranges they wanted the uh, the libertarian party which is a, a smaller party right. um to have a million votes in their primaries. Well, the Libertarian Party as a party has maybe... Well, wait, wait a minute, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's say, that, let's say on average, the number that's normally quoted is 300 million for the U.S., right? Well, the, yes, the so United 10, States... 10% is 30. Right, 30 million. The, so what's, our what's caucuses, the, our primaries, we had a million people. Now, that's, we, had, we, didn't ha we did not meet a million-person threshold. But what's interesting about the threshold we did meet is that Republicans, maybe the Republicans represent 60 million people, or let's say 100 million people, if, the, if that, okay? Actually, probably about 50, mm -hmm. 60 million people. Out of that 60, those 60 million people, maybe three, four, let's say, be generous and say 9% of those people are actually actively rooting for Donald Trump, actively involved. Three, six, nine percent get out of the the Libertarian Party, which is much smaller. Our interest and activity level by our members is 93, 97 percent. That is huge. You, the apathy in the Democratic Party, the apathy wow. in the Republican okay. Party. Why do I just because you've got a big name? Yeah, yeah, why do yeah. I want your apathy well, I, to run over anyway, our I, activism? I, I got your point. There. We're going to take a short break. We're going to continue this discussion. We're going to take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back. We're going to have someone else join us. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Okay, as you can see, boy, we're we're busy bunch right now. We got another good thirty minutes, but but we're spending the time on the Libertarian Party, and right up front with you, we're trying to bring issues to the table. Uh, it's going to all start uh, about the end of September, and uh, they're looking at possibly bringing on two more people, one from the Green Party and one from the Libertarian Party. And I think it's very, very important because I tell you, there's such a major uh, divide. Uh, even though I know that there are some dedicated uh, supporters, both for, for, for Hillary Clinton and, and, and uh, Donald Trump, the fact of the matter is we're not saying, no, you keep you maintain your dedication, but the fact of the matter is I think with the idea of these other two entities coming to the table, I think media will bring those bring issues to the table, and then at the end of the day, you know, gee whiz, we'll have a better way. We'll have a better world. <laughs> we will. We so, will, and I anyway. want to bring. You so know, anyway, I really we're back here now, and we've got we've got Scott here. Boy, he's 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 hot, and I like that. They've got a lot of enthusiasm, but they still got to get on. There's the table. a passion. <laughs> there really is a passion. And before you get into that, before get, let's, let's, let's get let's get oh. Teresa in here. Okay, let's get the, Teresa Debellas. She's here, Debellas. 
that, is that Italian, right? It's Italian. That's Italian, yeah. okay. But anyway, she's a libertarian, and before we get going and really start it, we want to introduce her and give her the opportunity to, to share with the with the viewing public why'd she, get, why'd she get in this particular group, if you will. Oh, And what yeah. do you think about this group? 2004, um, I love it. Okay. Um, it's. It, I'm not going to say it hasn't been a long, long, agonizing road. I've only been involved since 2004. I think of the people that started in 1971. Oh, wow. So in 2004, I mean, I make a joke of it, and it's not funny too much right now, but I like to make people laugh sometimes. We're, <laughs> up, up to this point, we've been very good at conceding races. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, you know, we would go back and say, yay, we got more than 2% of the vote, you know, which was 3%, you know. So, but we never stopped. I mean, the, the group that I'm involved mm -hmm. in. Um, to build a momentum. We never, ever gave up, and we wouldn't give up either. And the reason we feel that way is we feel strongly. You're talking a lot about the two-party system mm -hmm. that dominates. But what was your passion, T? My passion... Um, <clears throat> for joining this group. My passion was um, just understanding that there's a different way to do things. Okay, so when I was growing up, um, I was bo born and raised a Democrat in San Francisco. You don't get more dyed in wool than that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I asked questions. I said, Mom, um, tell me, um, what? why don't we like Republicans? <laughs> you <laughs> know, great. and, and she, she didn't have a good answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, she just said, basically, she said, because they're, I mean, excuse me, Mom, I don't mean to say this on TV, but they're, I got the feeling they're bad and they're wrong. Mm. Bad people mm. and they're wrong about what they believe in. Mm. And we are right. And this is one of the big things that we believed in, quote unquote, was um, helping out minorities. Mm. Okay? That meant a lot to me mm -hmm. in my heart and my soul. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't care about that? Mm -hmm. Some people don't care. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, as I was growing up, it, it didn't make sense to me then and it made a lot less sense to me um, as I grew. Now, the fascinating thing that happened to me was. I began to immerse myself in the other viewpoint, which at the time w was the Republican viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> a funny thing happens to you when you've been dyed in the wool in a mindset. You, you, your blood starts, your blood pressure starts to go mm -hmm. up when you hear a Republican talking, mm -hmm. right? And you, you become <laughs> not very rational mm -hmm. about it because that person talking is mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. And um, I have worked very hard to weed that out of my emotional state, my, mm -hmm. my mental body. And what I have focused on over and over is listening mm -hmm. to what that person okay. is saying. Okay. Now, I understand, I believe, what Democrats have been saying, okay? Because I spent a lot of time there. I feel mm -hmm. like after 12 years, I have a much better idea mm -hmm. of what Republicans are talking about, mm -hmm. okay? The answer for me around 2004 was still the Libertarian Party mm -hmm. because, um, it, you know, a lot of what you were talking about, Scott, um, we, it, it's about the individual. And more than that, I would say, just to add to that, it's about individual freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, the, the Libertarian Party brought that to light. They brought that out. And as time has gone by, you've all seen it. Our freedoms have been taken away mm -hmm. and taken Undermined. away and taken away over and over. And you have to That's be extremely right, careful. Right, when you pull someone over and confiscate every, their wallet, their credit card, and then draw, draft money out of their bank account, that's called theft. And you may do it in the name of the law. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's happening is when people are getting pulled over. But you <laughs> see, if you don't fight that fight, mm -hmm. if you do not do anything about it, your freedoms will be stripped away to the point where you can't move. Well, that's what this country was about. That's how it was started. And that's exactly. what the two dominant parties are exactly. doing. They're mollifying, they're pacifying us with garbage as we're watching our civil liberties be stripped one by one. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I use the word garbage mm -hmm. because when you're talking about the policies that these two, when Donald Trump talks about 30% 30 30 increase in tariffs or rounding up 11 million people and kicking them out of the nation, or when Hillary Clinton, the architect of our war in the Middle East taking place and the devastation of those wars toppling one dictator and then having two other enemies or um, ISIS or Al-Qaeda spring up. This is serious garbage. This is not, America is tired of this. How many years, we, how many decades have we been at war? And that's just one illustration. But now is the time to discuss those issues. Yes. That's what I'm saying. The and, so, and, and so in all, yeah. due, in all due respect, uh, let, let me admit also, I'm in the sort of in the same situation, uh, been a Republican for a number of years, but I 
was a Lincoln Republican. Right. Uh, because I felt that there was not enough done as far as Republicans mm -hmm. acknowledging what Lincoln represented. We never actually did anything along that particular line. And I still say that uh, had not President Lincoln died, we wouldn't be talking about the whole issue of race division. You know, I think we would have, yeah. we'd be in a better world. But unfortunately, that happened. Right. But that was my focus, you know what I'm saying? Right, or John but F. Now, Kennedy. But now, all of a sudden, you know, and I'm saying it to the right up front, I'm, I'm now a registered libertarian. Mm -hmm. and my what rational, a journey for you. Yeah, but my, but my rationale, my passion, mm -hmm. is that I want debate. I want libertarians, and in all due respect, even the Green Party. I want them at that table. I believe that there needs talk, to be to bring robust... bring issues to the table. Yeah. We need to have that discussion, and that's my, that's my passion. Yeah. For, so how for, we do for that for joining the group now yeah. I'm a, everything that I can do and, I, and, I'll do, and I'm just saying and I'm saying hopefully you have a passion so when you sit in the bed saying well okay fine I'm a registered Republican a Democrat mm -hmm. just just don't take make sure you identify why you at the table yeah that's a very important piece okay can I add one more sure thing? enough okay <clears throat> um, what didn't ring true as a child and didn't ring true as an adult either mm -hmm. when I was analyzing and analyzing why am I a Democrat why mm -hmm. do you say this why do you say mm -hmm. that um, we, it's an argument. My mom said it's an argument. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's just, let's admit at this point that system has completely failed. Mm. Yes. You tell one side of people that they're right, and you tell another side of the people they're right. Mm -hmm. What do you you feel? You feel passionately mm -hmm. that you're right, mm -hmm. and the, and you're not open. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we need to do. I don't. I'm not talking about compromise is the key. It's not really. Mm -hmm. You have to we have don't a discussion. Need compromise. Mm -hmm. We have to have discussion, yes, yes. and, and you we can. have to have a dialogue mm -hmm. where you you mentioned that where yeah. people aren't listening to yeah. each other anymore. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. pundits are getting on television and they're saying the same things over and over. Yeah, otherwise, we never reach assimilation. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> no, we, don't, we, we don't reach assimilation. We right. don't reach the point where we can. The just irony say, of we're all Americans as opposed to we're black Americans, we're white we want Americans, we're brown Americans. You know what I'm saying? Why would we want a simulation? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk no, about that? I'm going to throw that out to you oh. right now. <laughs> Give me your tired, huddled masses. Give me your tired, huddled masses, okay? Why do we want assimilation? Well, we want the beauty of the diversity, but we also want the fact that we are well, one but, common but, but cloth. think about it, Scott. That's why we were born to begin with. Mm -hmm. We were all together. <laughs> When we fought the mother country, the Britain. Yeah. we were all together. When Paul Revere right. ran, I understand he was African American. <laughs> so <laughs> someone said he was African American to me. The point. So, well, my, my point is that we really got into that die, but everybody was together. Yeah. Sorry, we had a common rallying cry, which is the, the civil liberties, the freedoms that, we're, that yeah, Teresa yeah, was talking yeah, yeah. about. So how do we get there? What it really means is that every person watching this program right now, people who are really taking an interest in this um, national election, they're really, here's what I am saying to you. You may not be a libertarian, but you recognize that the two-party system is broken down to such an extent that there is no discussion, no communication, and our ideas are, are gridlocked, our ideas are um, unrecognizable. The issues are not, and the issues are not being discussed. discussed. Yeah. So when you get Very a important. third party, I want every person to, obviously, I want them to vote Gary Johnson in November. But what I'm saying right now, if we don't get a third party, if we don't get these other candidates on the platform for you, the discussion, you only have two, you we're going to have two, Trump two. throwing dirt at Clinton, right. Clinton throwing dirt that's at right. Trump. No one is going to be listening. Yeah, but right. if you add a third person, if you add a Gary Johnson or a Jill Stein to that debate stage, suddenly now you have to have a discussion on policy, on issues, yeah. and on the nature of the candidate running, the character mm -hmm. of the candidate running. You know what? No one, yes, we have the, the, yeah. the press pieces about, oh, Trump is this or Clinton is that and emails, but imagine on a debate stage when you have a Gary Johnson who has no drama, who has no scandal, a Bill Weld who has incredible integrity compared to a Donald Trump or a Hillary Clinton. When we start, character counts. Integrity means something, and that will come across well, on the well, debate one, stage. Well, I might add, though, there are two seasoned and governors, but, but in all due respect, they really haven't been as vetted yet. Oh, they have been. You don't be a Democrat, you don't be a Republican governor in a Democratic state and not be carefully okay. vetted. But I'm just you don't saying, debate. Gary I'm Johnson saying, debated 29 uh, times only, with Martin only, Chavez. The only point I'm talking about, in, in our day and age, it seems as though they tend to invent things, you know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately. But my These point guys is that, have track oh, records that go back 30 years, well, 40 years. But my point is that they need to see more of that. 
the, the, the public need to see more. So, in right. fact, the poll could get out to the public at large. Well, that's up to our media to report that. That's up to the yeah. Oregonian to write about Gary Johnson's governorship. But like I said, we got to have more than just the Oregonian because a lot of people don't even take the Oregonian. No, yeah. we have to have ABC at, News. Lot, we need to a have... A lot of people don't look at ABC News. I'm PBS. Just, I'm just saying we got to get the folks out there because this process... With these two entities, they pretty well control that piece. They've been controlling that I piece. believe, you know, I think they their days are numbered. Their they days do are not numbered. want anybody else in those debates. When well, you have a former um, Justice Department uh, um, attorney, Bill Weld, on public television, before, uh, pres a vice presidential candidate bringing out to the awareness of the audience mm -hmm. that this is partisan pro politics and it jeopardizes the standing of a tax-exempt status mm -hmm. for the Commission on Presidential Debates. Their days are numbered. There's now, already now, a lawsuit in the Now, you do works. understand that in all due respect, during the political process, during this particular time, you can lie, you can cheat, you can say anything it's you gonna want. It's going to catch you. As long as you got money to buy an ad. You can and you cannot. It's really a sad situation. I'm no, on. but what's happening is we can It's a sad situation until people take there you their go. power back. There we go. Right. There we go. Say it needs to stop. Okay. Right. Character matters. That's, right. that's why we need to. Character matters. matters. Integrity. That's right. that's right. Integrity. Right. Who you are. Do that's you right. stand up for what you do? Gary Johnson's right. book, Seven Principles of, of Good Government, mm -hmm. it's not a big tomb, but when you read it, man, there's integrity to it. There's a humility. Well, that's, to I've it. never heard that before. Not a big Seven book. Prin it's, it's not a big tomb. It's not a big, large volume. It's not, okay, it's not a 500 page okay, book. Tome. Tome. I say tome, tome, oh. tome, tome, tome yeah, T-O-M-E. A tomb is where Not T-O-M-B, right. but T-O-M-E. <laughs> right, tomato, yes. potato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> okay. Right, no, no, okay. she's right. A tome, a T-O-M-E. <laughs> It's not, it's, not right. it's, you know, it's not a 500-page book. It's not a crypt, man. It's not, right, a, okay. crypt, it's not right, a, okay. a sepulcher. Yes, right. <laughs> Gee, I had to pull out my party yeah. thing. <laughs> that was so but the point is it belies an experience, it belies a humility, and it belies an integrity. Okay. There's no braggadocious ego okay. there. Okay. okay. And I like that in my commander-in-chief. Okay. Tell me this. Now, let, let's get right back down to Let's say, for instance, uh, in the debate, the, share with the people uh, the, 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 the rationale, if you will, why, why it's so important. Uh, like, like the issues, like instance, we got two major, we got issues. Again, again, assimilation is the key. Like we're talking this whole issue of race. Race is a, a ma more of an issue today than it was several years ago. We can't ago. get a Supreme Court justice yeah, put well, through well, nominated. But across the board, I mean, it's just. What does that do for race it's relations? Across every, like I said, we just had a, a killing, you know, I mean, just here, here in Portland. Yeah. Right here in Gresham, so to speak. So my point is that it's very important. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the issues you think that should be discussed uh, that will hopefully come out as a result of, quote, getting the Libertarian Party and the Green Party in this debate. What well, do you think, okay. Tracy? Okay. Go on, T. Um, what do you think? What would be one that you think would, would be a, of interest to Well, to I discuss? care deeply about that issue. Um, the thing is, people have criticized me, you know, when I get into debates with people one-on-one -on -one about, well, oh, you, you're you libertarian? I've heard people say to me in front of everybody, oh, you you, you guys are crazy. But well, that's your right, though. But, <laughs> you know, well, I have a right to be crazy yeah, if I want to, but right to but the point is, is that what libertarianism says, when you, when you peel it all the way down, mm -hmm. what it's saying is, let's move forward, mm -hmm. okay? We have to legislate people to remind them not to discriminate against people that quote unquote need assimilation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it shouldn't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're trying to control people by passing laws to tell them to do the right How thing. Redistribution of wealth is the same concept, right. okay? We don't need redistribution of wealth, okay? Mm -hmm. We need the discussion a that elevates with integrity and a person with integrity mm -hmm. and a person with character and integrity that stand up and do the right thing. And let's talk then about integrity. Then I don't have to have a law to tell me how to do it. You Here's think this a practical. Is something you think that, that discussion should be on the table? Has to be. I mean, let's think about this right now. Elementary school kids watching the the behavior of Donald Trump on television. They are not allowed to behave in that way in school with their teachers and classmates. But where it's okay to do it on a national debate, on a national mm -hmm. presidential level, mm -hmm. going down to meet with President Pena, mm -hmm. coming across the border, and then blasting the nation, the, the Mexican people. Um, this is this. You cannot have this type of discussion because it shuts people down it amps up the adrenaline it amps up it revs up the anger but, but like you said though but we have any discussion <laughs> the discussion we, takes place fighting the fight right, for 30 what, years right. what I'm we, we got, the discussion takes discussion. place when a gary johnson and a jill stein are yes. on that now well that's when, the rationale for wanting to have that that's why not I, that's just why for, not important. not just for this 
but in everything. No, but right now, I'm talking, for I'm right talking now, about the presidential we, elections. We need to have them on the debate stage, and right, that comes right, from people right, knowing right. those two names. Right, right, right. By people watching this program, right. putting out on Facebook, hey, you know, I'm learning about this Gary Johnson right, guy. Right, right. Not to say, not trying to say, well, Trump is better or Clinton is worse, but right now we're hearing that we can change the way we talk. If mm -hmm. I, if you and I are talking right now privately, and a third person walks into the room, it changes our behavior. It mm -hmm. changes the way we talk. Oh, yeah, it right. changes the things that we're speaking to one another. Yeah, the yeah. ideas. The, the mannerisms, the, right. the tone. Yeah. And so if you get a third person or a fourth person on that debate stage, it changes the national dialogue, yeah. the narrative. Yeah. And that's really, when you talk about assimilation, these are ideas. We have got to have a conversation of, of ideas before we jump past the brain and into the emotions and everybody is acting out in anger, in frustration. And that's what's happening when we see these rallies and we see the violence is because now we're no longer talking rationally. We're talking on a level of visceral emotions that are being pushed and stirred up by someone saying that Mexican is a racist. He's a drug user. He's a that Mexico sending over their worst. They're these criminals. And what does that do? That inflames my passions to be against that person and rather than say, wait a second. Okay, let's put it in the terms of comment. Okay, you and I, let's say I smoke a joint right now, okay? Well, what's a joint? A joint. <laughs> Marijuana. Let's say I smoke some marijuana, okay? Say I'm in a, I smoke marijuana. Okay. And marijuana is technically an illegal act by the federal government. But my illegal act is not necessarily criminal in the sense that I am breaking into houses, stealing goods, I'm holding people up at gunpoint. So I may be Ill illegal, but my behavior in your community not is not criminal. criminal. Okay. okay, but when we speak in the, the incendiary language that this debate, that this, this not debate, but this presidential race is being spoken of, I can no longer speak to someone mind to mind or heart to heart. I'm doing it from visceral anger. That is a recipe to keep the Trumps and the Clintons in powers while everybody else is just throwing rocks at one another. But, but we still must recognize, you know, they were selected by their respective parties. What does that say about their people, their well, parties? Well, I'm just saying it's and an issue, system. but it's, it's all of our issues. Yeah. But it only 9% of the American yeah. electorate, no, but, Bruce, but, but only 9% of the American electorate gave us a Trump, gave us a Clinton. Only 9%. Yeah, yeah, but, but even if it's 1%, my point is that they're the two major candidates. At the end of the day, one they won't be, be after this election no, cycle. Uh, but I mean, unless we can have this <laughs> <laughs> this this entity here, right? He, let's this say, let's, debate. You're talking about the debate. The, the debate. But at the same time, if the issues were thrown on the table, and these other two entities, both the Libertarian Party and the Green Party, was there, and we really discussed this issue, and really come up with, i.e., specific policies, wouldn't that, that be counters refreshing? a lot of this stuff? As wouldn't that be? So in all due what respect, would that do to the American so in all spirit? Due, in all due respect, and I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking, I'm not taking any away from taking no, anything I, I, away from I, the Libertarian Party, the Green Party. But my point is, if, if let's say, if a, a Republican is elected, a Democrat elected, Democrats elected, I'm fine, long as, long as well, I, that's I what do you we realize? signed the contract. Do you know? We need a um, contract. Bruce, do you know that Gary Johnson Crazy. and Bill, Bill Weld and Gary Johnson are, are making that very point that you just made? They are saying that because they're libertarian, there's not a libertarian Congress, okay? Yeah. They are saying that as libertarian, if they become president, We're Americans. And vice president We're all Americans. so they will take the brightest minds from the Democratic Party who have libertarian leanings. They will take the brightest minds from the Republican Party who have libertarian leanings, and they will use they will take this these people into the fold to create their cabinet, their administration. So now we're talking about the discussion, this roundtable discussion of ideas coming from Republicans, the Democrats, all again with libertarian leanings. It changes. Now it's not just Republican against Democrat. They are being, Johnson and Weld are being very inclusive in their, con in their conversation, in their language. They are inviting passionate Democrats, passionate Republicans who are concerned about our nation to come in to this fold and be part of their cabinet, be part of their administration, and move forward so we don't have this gridlock. And that's why I'm thankful for Governor Johnson, Governor Vito, who has vetoed 750 um, um, pieces of legislation coming across his governor's desk, because he knows that he can, he can by not rubber stamping legislation, but sending it back to be readjusted to be um, inclusive or to change how money is being spent now you're working across the aisle okay. republicans in order but at the end of the day it's assimilation it's all assimilation through right. discussion I, w I would like it's, to say all, that too. Yes. 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 The idea, yes. the idea of the yes. round table yes. Yes. it's assimilation yes. Yes. through a discussion now, there's another another yeah. element I want to throw into the round table I love it that you're talking yeah. about Gary Johnson bringing the round table mm -hmm. in why do you want to do that why did I start talking about yeah. that because it's the 
the yeah, the Democrats America. have some great things yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, they yes, do. Yes. The Republicans have yes, some yes, very, yes, very yes, important yes, principles. Yeah. We need all yes. of that. That roundtable discussion. We need discussion. all of that. The discussion. American that, that, discussion. There's one other entity and, that has a lot to say. The Oregon Voters Digest. Uh, <laughs> you want to come to the table too? Oh yes. I'm I, at, oh, wait a minute. I think we're at the table. Yeah, but we're our own little table. We want to. We want to be at the big table. We're trying to allow these other two entities to come to. One more piece I want to point out. When you come to the table, what character do you bring to the yeah, table? There you go. Okay? I happen to be, I know what one of my strengths is, okay? I know what I think one of your strengths is. You like the truth. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. Um, tell me what one of your strengths is. is are you an honorable person? Um, I think one of my strengths is that I'm passionate, and I don't mean simply emotional. Mm -hmm. I've recognized the, the opportunity. And, what, I'm, I, what, I'm what optimistic. About, my, one of my greatest qualities is I'm op, very what optimistic. What about gracious giving? Gracious giving. When, when, I, when I get to know you a little bit, just talking to you, I've had mm -hmm. maybe five conversations with you in my whole life, I notice that you bring your heart to the conversation. Correct. So yeah, what but, happens? What, let me see. What would my strength be? Um, I think honor. I, I work hard for honor. Mm. So what, okay, now look at what we've done. Now, I'm not fighting with you, and I'm not fighting with you, mm -hmm. um, and telling you where all your character mm, flaws right. are, and where all yours are. Right. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you need to come to the table, yeah. and you need to bring that beautiful mm -hmm. strength you in yourself. You got something to contribute, mm -hmm. as opposed to something that you're walled why? off. Because from. I depend on gracious giving, mm. okay? I right. depend mm -hmm. with everything. Mm -hmm. I depend on somebody to stand up and be truthful. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so now I need you to come to the table mm -hmm. because everybody can contribute. And that's the debate. And, and, well, and in this debate. election cycle, the one that's man the with debate. that. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Bruce. That's the debate. And by the way, before I forget it, Please have these kind of discussions, even at your home, even with your neighbors. You with know, your just Facebook get friends. some folks. Yeah, pull out that Facebook because guess what? You you have your own yeah, voters' digest right, here. right there. Oh, he's looking at you. <laughs> yeah, right, right there. We got about two more minutes here right. going. In. But this has been just this is just great. To change the nature of how we as Americans yeah, well, are well, talking about our well, problems. We got two minutes now. We got two minutes left. Now, why don't you kind of just lay out on on the table now in terms how can we influence? The decision to make sure that there are the several things that can be, be done. Inclusive. First of all, I would I would encourage the listening audience to contact the polling companies and the moderators of the debates, saying have a fair debate. The In, polling companies. Who are you talking? Um, about? Quinnipiac, ABC News, New York Times. You can go to Oregon for Gary Johnson. I've got them listed all. Oh, on, right? on, 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 One more Oregon time. For Gary, Oregon for Gary Johnson on Facebook page on, on the Facebook page Oregon for Gary Johnson, and it gives you the the email addresses, telephone numbers of the the polling company. Good but point. then also list who the moderator is going to be because don't we, why do why does Chris Wallace who's going to be one of the moderators oh, yeah. why Fox. let's put pressure on Chris Wallace well, Chris this is a this is a partisan event why are you excluding a truly roundtable discussion put Chris why are you putting your reputation as a journalist on the line by advocating for a partisan for, format. But, but you know what, in all due respect, you know, I would not say that. I mean, make sure you, he's working for someone. He's an employee. He's working for Fox he's, News. You know, so, but, so hit Fox that way. Don't but, hit Fox, Chris. but Chris but Wallace, you put pressure on him well, and you put pressure you, on Fox you News. You put pressure on me. I mean, Absolutely. No, 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 I'm the one saying, Bruce, I want to be on your show. I want to talk about this. This is important to me. And you're going, yes, this is important. Let's have you on your show. No, I'm just. I got, <laughs> I got to deal with my staff. We got one minute left here. <laughs> Teresa, you have your. Uh, uh, nothing. Um, consider the Libertarian Party as a real solution to okay. a lot of problems in our country that need to be fixed. Our whole system needs yeah. to be changed, good. people. It's a different Let's way of talking. stand up and change it now. Good, good, good. Hey, by the way, this is going to be on YouTube. Probably by Tuesday of next week. Yeah, we're going to be on YouTube. Share it. I'll put it on the share Oregon it. for Gary Johnson and page. Please, we'll share it. And anybody, just share it to anybody and everybody you know, and then tell them to share it also, too. Right. Well, we're at the end of the deal. This has just been great. Appreciate it very much. I think we got, we did something. We did. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one. Enjoy your Labor Day. Eat your food, and we'll see you <laughs> next Sunday. We're going to be talking. Give yeah, thanks for all the good things that we have. We may have problems, but we've got many good things. Okay, good. Johnson Will, right? Johnson Will. Yeah, do, absolutely. Do, do, do your Superman deal now. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> <laughs> or Mr. T's, depending on whether I'm at the home. I'm making fun.